Here's a problem you could run into while building a stairway for a new house or even part of a remodeling project. If the stairs are built after the floor is sheeted, so let's just say that you haven't had time to build the stairway, but you got time to build the floor, you, got, you frame the floor, you joist it, and then you install the sheathing. Well, a lot of times the floor sheathing installer will cut the plywood off here they won't let it overhang and if you look at the next last the previous picture we need the plywood to come out farther and you're probably thinking hey what's the big deal i can go ahead and cut this off here and then fill this in well this won't be a big deal if you have about a 10 inch piece of sheathing to install but it will be a big deal if you have a stringer that's only about four inches here or worse yet let's just say you have a stringer that butts up against the floor joist um, or a, a there's a wall here with a ledger and someone cuts it off flush here and all you needed was another inch and a half or two inches here now you've got a big problem so i'm here to tell you as a stair builder someone who has installed plenty of stairs on new homes um, where the sheathing installer, the floor sheathing installer, rarely, if ever, left me an overhang, uh, it creates a problem for the stair builder. You will need to leave an overhang uh, and let it go a little farther. If you think you need 10 inches, let it go 14 inches. You know, from here to here, the stair builder can always cut this off. And I remember there were times when I used to cut off, you know, 18-inch boards because the um, floor sheathing installer got tired of listening to me complain and would just leave me a two-foot section or a three-foot section of plywood here because they got uh, irritated at me. But it's important. If this is only about two inches long, and, and this is the reasoning behind it, if this, if this doesn't go back far enough, while you're walking down the stairway, most of the weight from your feet will be in this area. And if you think about it, it's not like a robot who's going to be coming straight down each step. When we walk down the stairways, we bend our feet. We bend our feet Go to the next step and we bend them. And then when we're climbing up, what are we doing? We're doing the same thing. And we put a lot of pressure on the tips of the nosing here. So, again, that's the reasoning behind um, the leaving the plywood, uh, let it over, letting it overhang a ways instead of cutting it off flush. I had a couple of more pictures in here. If you do run into a situation like this, you can always nail your stairway in. Grab a, grab a board and fill it in and, of course, make sure that it breaks on something and then nail it good. Nail it good into the stringer and you probably won't have a problem if the area uh, or the measurement, the distance from here to here is at least 10 inches. Anything less um, could be a problem. If you're going to put uh, a piece um, that's going to be five inches in here. You'd better make sure that you have some blocks under here and you nail it good and glue the crap out of it, whatever it takes. Uh, because even as I've seen six inch pieces um, start to loosen up over time and, of course, create problems for the flooring. I mean, if you can imagine what kind of a problem would be like if this was carpeted, you had a layer of carpeting on top of here and this starts to loosen up this area here. Every time someone steps down on this, this area lifts up a little bit. And, and of course, I'm, I'm not referring to pieces of plywood that have been nailed properly and are long enough. I'd be referring to, if you could imagine, this piece right here, only four inches long and not nailed properly. If someone comes on here, this, this part's going to be coming up. This is just going to be a nightmare. And if there's a layer of carpeting over it, you're just eventually going to have nails popping up and through the carpeting, and the carpeting um, could tear and rip, and uh, and then you'd have to replace the flooring, and all because of why? Because you didn't have enough ply, enough overhang here, or there wasn't a continuous layer of subflooring. One last picture. This is basically what. I would be referring to, and you can see here that we started with a four-foot piece of plywood here, 
another four foot piece of plywood and then this here to uh, finish it off and of course that worked out fine um, for this so uh, this was pre-planned like I said this wasn't something that uh, we did the stairway was built the floor sheather stopped the plywood here and then of course I installed this last piece and everything was fine but if you could imagine the let's just say that this piece right here um, the was was larger instead of being eight feet from this area here it was um, eight foot um, so let me just make this as clear as I can here from this point to this point is eight foot right now but could you imagine if from this point here to let's say this point here was eight foot um, well then you know someone's gonna go ahead and put a piece of tongue and groove in here and um, you know if you only have an inch or three inches of nailing now you see the problem that I'm running into you know it'd be better if this was the case to run the plywood and stop it at the um, head out here or even a little farther back block the area and then put a 10 inch piece of plywood in there or subflooring so hope that makes sense this really was a big problem I had to uh, had a tough time with as a, a carpenter working in the construction industry and of course that's anything realistically where you have more than one person doing different jobs for example one person installing the stairs and another person installing the subflooring 